Great to see everybody. This is amazing to me is uh, watching the panel last night and they talked about Cloud Foundry ecosystem which was my first job working on Cloud Foundry in 2010. And uh, it occurred to me that I didn't know the Cloud Foundry ecosystem anymore. And uh, there was a time where I could probably write on one little piece of paper the, the Cloud Foundry ecosystem out and I knew all of their phone numbers and their girlfriend's names and what they like to eat. Um, and I don't anymore. In fact, it's much bigger than anything I could have imagined. And uh, to stand up here and have a thousand people looking back at me is uh, it's pretty amazing. So big thanks to Andrew before I get started though and being a special ingredient. The first time we uh, tried to pull together the uh, platform conference last fall, he told the story. I said, hey, maybe we'll get 150 people out. And uh, we really rallied about 500. And today we've grown even bigger and the work of you know, Andrew with Platform and uh, his background in DevOps is amazing and what Leo Spiegel and the foundation team has done to rally the ecosystem has been amazing as well. So just a big thank you. Since that last conference though, something kept on happening. And the last time I got up at, uh, in September, I you know, used this familiar trend. Um, and I'm here to tell you that it got even stronger. So software did not ask our permission and it just kept on doing its thing and it kept on changing the economic organization of our world at an ever increasing and accelerating pace. And this slide here is funny because I have to keep changing the valuations. <laughs> they keep going up so fast. Uh, Uber started on this slide at, 13, at 3 billion and uh, this morning before I did this talk I had to add a whopping 16 billion dollars to that number. So these trends that are changing our world and making software-based economic competition that I talked about last September have gotten even stronger and even more pressing. So as the Cloud Foundry ecosystem has grown, that challenge that we're all facing together has gotten even stronger. Um, and we've seen this become so ubiquitous that you know, I've spent my last six months on the road talking to the leading enterprises that make up the global economy. And they all share this both urgency and trepidation around how they have to change in the future to compete. And not to pick on traditional IT vendors, but I like to show this in contrast. This was a keynote slide from John Chambers uh, at his summit that he, that he hosted. And you know, a lot of these vendors are here today, and I even say you know, uh, Pivotal's parent company, EMC, you know, and their core business is not growing at tremendously fast rates either, just to be fair. But I show this slide because traditional IT is not participating in some sense with this massive and radical change that's creating billions and billions of dollars worth of value out there in the software's eating the world-based economy. And I think that should get all of us pause and, and reflect a moment on how is it that these companies that have been such a mainstay for the last 20 years in tech are not participating in the most tremendous growth we've seen. And I think that comes back to this idea of a software-centric versus infrastructure-centric world. And that's why platform as a service has become so important. And I'll talk a bit more about that. And when you drill into how this new world organizes itself and how it thinks and reasons, at the center of that is developer productivity and agility. And the ability to write applications that change, applications that consume ever-increasing amounts of data, applications that are natively mobile, not native to a data center and applications that are driven in their life cycle by analytics and data, by data that profoundly changes how the consumer experiences things and a predictive experience about what they should be doing next, as well as how suppliers organize themselves to fulfill that consumer demand. That sense of agility meeting analytics is really what's caused this vortex whirlwind of software-based competition that a lot of traditional vendors have not participated in. And we all know about Netflix, but sometimes it's good to go back and look exactly what happened with Netflix. And they started off as a traditional IT company, actually, in a sense. They had IBM P-Series, they had Oracle, they had VMware and a traditional data center, and they shipped you DVDs. And that was a very 1.0 kind of innovation that they had. But they realized along their journey that they needed to pivot. And so they turned to infrastructure as a service and they reorganized their entire team to deliver services with Amazon. But what they found was it still had too many steps. There were too many handoffs, and that iteration and that analytics process was not fast enough for them. And so where they ended up on is actually platform as a service. 
And platforms as a service changed the way they did business. It allowed them to drive commitment from the entire organization to shipping new features and to focusing on analytics about what those new features should be as the primary thing that everyone did every day at the office. And so they presented this deck, Adrian Cocroft, uh, kind of as a you know, victory lap after his great success at, at Netflix um, and how he changed the organization. I think that's why PaaS is so important. IDC, who's here today, has come out and said that infrastructure as a service without platform as a service is really a dying breed. That the focus should not just be on data centers and infrastructure. It has to be on applications and analytics and, and data-driven applications. And InfoWorld said about Cloud Foundry that it's one of the most single most important things you can do is to give your development team access to a platform as a service. So this trend has really grown in a profound way. And Cloud Foundry, since 2011, as a hosted web service, has provided this. So we've continued to iterate and make it even more powerful. And this is Pivotal Web Services today, which now is generally available. You can take credit cards. You can go out and use that hosted web service. And it really focuses in a different way than Amazon on applications and services. If you've ever logged into an Amazon console, you've seen you know, 50 to 100 thousands of virtual machines. And they're not grouped in any kind of you know, application-centric fashion. And that leaves you feeling like, hey, where are my apps in here? Where does that one app begin and the other app end? And how do I reason about this system? And Platform as a Service really changes that. It makes everything that you see about applications, domains, scale, services. But it wasn't enough just to have a hosted platform as a service, come one, come all. In November 15th, after the last platform conference, we shipped a world-changing product called Pivotal CF. And Pivotal CF, for the first time, allowed you to take that platform as a service that we offered as a hosted edition and bring it to a private data center or to stand your own version of up on a cloud of your choice. And we revolutionized not just that developer experience, but also for the first time that operator's experience. And we gave the data center operators choice about standing up their own Amazon-like services behind the firewall. That was really a game-changing moment here. Um, and we already have several customers who've come along the, the journey with us here to speak today. What it's really about, as a step back, is not just you know, software for its own sake. It's about third-platform third applications, things that are centered around the world of mobile, big data, cloud, et cetera, these new, new kinds of competition. And you can see here in this IDC chart, again, that's where the growth is. And it's very kind of stares you in the face in simplicity. Traditional applications are not growing. Traditional spending on those applications is not growing. These new competitive differentiation generating applications are growing the fastest. You need to align your strategy around how do you fulfill that kind of demand. And I like to look at one of the largest acquisitions, or the largest acquisition Google has ever made. A lot of people think about these little $100, $200 million acquisitions it makes kind of in the talent space. But the biggest bet Google's ever made from a corporate development perspective is Nest. And there's something really particular about the Nest disruptive application pattern that I think is applicable to next generation applications. What Nest really did is it not only revolutionized the consumer experience of how they had a predictive, um, predictive interface both on their mobile phone and in the appliance itself around what temperature the user should expect to set their house to and their history, but they also started to use deep analytics in the back end to tell suppliers and power generators what to expect. And that was a really profound reorganization of you know, the power generation economy that's coming. And that's why Google made such a big bet. And these are the kind of applications, I think, that combine user experiences, mobile analytics that are changing the world. Netflix is an example of that. And again, the recommendations are speed in the marketplace wins. They champion the idea that you should use microservices versus monoliths to assemble your team, to back that with agility. And also that you should use simple patterns automated by PaaS. These are all quotes from Netflix after Adrian left there, giving recommendations for how others can compete like he did. This core application change is really important because it starts to allow, you know, I talk to a lot of customers about how can we iterate and change our applications when they're all monoliths, when you have to change it all at once every six or eight months or every year. And the idea of the moving to a microservices architecture is really important, and there'll be two talks about it here today at the conference that I hope you'll attend. By moving to a microservices architecture, you can start to have an agile team with one domain focus behind each microservice. And I won't go in depth, but a platform as a service is an ideal place to run that kind of application architecture. When you bring it all together, what you really need to do in the future for Cloud Foundry, our ambition, is to give you this third generation platform. 
So Pivotal CF is becoming that third generation platform as a service, not just with an elastic runtime that speeds developer efficiency and increases agility, but also with these scale out data services like Elastic Hadoop, a key value store, uh, Redis, and mobile backend services to allow you to build those nest pattern style applications that allow you to innovate. This is a pressing issue for almost every company that's out there today. And we want to address that by allowing them to deliver that on any cloud with Pivotal CF. Uh, sort of delivering on the fundamental promise of Cloud Foundry to be an alternative to Amazon. When you think back of you know, some of those vendors, you see that line in 2011 when their growth stopped. That's really when Amazon started taking off. And up until now, traditional companies haven't had an alternative to an Amazon-style architecture for these new applications. Pivotal CF, backed by Cloud Foundry, we believe will be that alternative to Amazon. Backing us is GE's investment in Pivotal. They are very much faced with how to build those Nest-style applications that are both rich in user experiences and predictive to supplier organization. Um, and they've invested $105 million into Pivotal and are working with Cloud Foundry and our Pivotal data suite um, to deliver those kind of applications. That's an early proof point of, of where we're headed. And my you know, kind of final call to action is think about the people in your organization and what they want. How do you make them all successful? What we recommend with Pivotal CF is that it starts with developers. Make them successful by allowing them to just push applications to a platform as a service to iterate rapidly. Um, to use new technologies such as Docker to import their applications into the platform as a service. But don't forget the operations people. When you're moving your platform as a service to a private data center, you really have to keep their operational demands and needs in check. And so with Pivotal CF, we've really focused long and hard on how do you make those operators successful? Because that's what's different from just that Pivotal web service experience you have where you don't know about the operations. That's done by three people on our team. When you're coming into a private data center, you really need to think about how do you empower those operations people behind the scenes to be successful. There's one particular feature that is uh, native now to Cloud Foundry that I'm very proud of that we worked on together with IBM, um, which is availability zones. So it's the only platform as a service available today that you can deploy applications into multiple availability zones with no developer configuration. So you can do a CF push and get four layers of high availability baked into your application. There's four ways that Cloud Foundry will continually try to revive every process, application, and zone in its system. That really changes the second part of rapid iteration in software, which is making the operations teams comfortable with taking the risk of new deployments and new applications. You also want to keep your architects and your CTO happy because they're under pressure of how do we work with all these next generation data services? How do we incorporate scale out key value store? How do we incorporate Hadoop as a service rapidly? Um, and Cloud Foundry and Pivotal CF will deliver these natively, allowing these next generation architectures to be an and, not an or, use Cloud Foundry or this. And I think that's very important, this next generation of design for apps, that they can come to the platform and natively consume everything from Jenkins as a service. We have partnered with CloudBees. They'll be here to talk about that today. Redis as a service. We're partnered with Redis Labs. They'll be here talking about their Redis service native to Pivotal CF, uh, working with Elasticsearch, and many more. Uh, to deliver all these services out of the box, uh, not only deployed, but update, managed, and scaled natively on Cloud Foundry. And finally, in an era of great uncertainty, it's really important to keep your CFO happy as well, because you need to be able to pick the cloud of your choice to deploy on. So today, it might be vSphere on private data center. And tomorrow, you might want to take advantage of Google's amazing new Google Cloud platform to do scale out applications and analytics. By betting on Pivotal CF, you're able to Pick one architecture that you can take then to any cloud. So that's really our call to action, um, is that platform as a service is really changing the way the modern economy is organized in the enterprise. And Pivotal CF is one of the first and the only um, enterprise distribution that's available on private and public clouds for Cloud Foundry. Thank you very much.